We are live. Good morning. Happy Friday. It's Friday, October 14, 2016, just barely more than a week before QuickBooks Connect. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. QuickBooks Connect, who's coming with me? So who is coming with me? Who out of all of you who are here now are actually going to QuickBooks Connect? I know Adam's not. Dennis, you're not. Gina? No Gina? No, not this year. All right. And Larry, um, I know you're muted. So chime in on the chat if for some reason your audio is not working. Katrina, you're coming, right? Um, I have not bought my ticket. <sighs> I don't know. Really? Yeah. I have my room still reserved. Okay. Um, but I have not bought my ticket. What's holding you back? Oh, just really busy. Gotcha. I, and, that I get. Yeah, and part of me wants to go to Accountex. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, yeah, but it's, it, you know, it's the time away. Again, right. it's the zero con, and that, mm -hmm. I thought I had everything really in order before I went, and then I came back, and things just went nuts. I totally get that. Yeah. Totally, totally get that. Um, I turned down all the other conferences this year for that reason. I, well, some I turned down and some I simply didn't chase. Like some of them, if I chased them, they would probably, you know, have me come and speak. And I was just, mm -hmm. not, I, I don't have time. Ain't how got in, no time for that. How involved is Doug Sleater still in account techs? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I know it's, it's, it's interesting what happened. I learned more than I guess was originally sort of revealed to the world. Um, not that long ago, I spoke with one of the guys from Account Tex. Um, his name is R.D. or J.D., something like that. His name is like his initials. Um, and apparently, here's what happened, according to him. You know, uh, Diversified Communications is the big, huge conferencing company that runs all these different conferences all over the world. And there's a lot of overlap. One of the sort of strategies, as I understand it, behind them buying Sleater was that they could sort of cross-pollinate a lot of the other conferences. They have a lot of industry-specific conferences where they have people in the restaurant business who might be interested in the accounting technology that's used for companies in the restaurant business. So they, you know, were really looking to leverage that. And then apparently, like, it, it, you know, and I'm, of course, um, what do you call it, uh, generalizing here, but apparently, like, a minute after they bought Sleater, they got the opportunity to buy Accountex. Accountex wasn't originally part of the mix. Oh, okay. so they bought a Countex, and it's, it, then based on that knowledge, it, it appears that they decided to use a Countex as the brand, brand where you know how they do Sleater. Anyway, that's the backstory that I now understand about it. I don't know how involved Doug is in that. Um, I, I dropped my Sleater membership because it without Sleater, it's not Sleater. <laughs> right, right, um, and uh, you know I think that's a good part of the reason that I. In many respects, and I'll be you know very honest and open here about this, I sort of dropped my support for it all for a number of reasons, and I decided that I want to just kind of go all in with QuickBooks Connect. Yeah. And there's, um, you know, for one thing, you know, it's interesting. I was having a conversation, a chat the other day, with one of the guys who is speaking at AccountTex, and. Uh, he was he was shocked when I told him that I not only wasn't going to be speaking there, wasn't going there at all. And, you know, they never reached out to me. Um, and, and it's funny because as I was talking to him, and he was evidently invited back to speak, he said that they did it all based on the speaker ratings year over year. And I'm like, really? And he even went as further to tell me that I guess somehow he saw the, the numbers, and he told me that the only people who were rated – uh, higher than him in terms of the speakers from last year, I guess, were Ed Class and myself. And I'm like, so the congrats. congrats. <laughs> Thank you. So, but that, the, it, now herein lies the irony. They reached out to him. Apparently, they're going by speaker ratings. Nobody bothered to call me. And you know, at a certain point, like Katrina was saying, I I was busy, and I was like, I don't have time to go chasing after them and beg them to come speak at the conference. So you know, and then as time went on. I really, you know, at one point I did reach out. This is when um, Jeannie Rush was still working with them. And um, I think it might have been before Misty left. And, you know, as you know by now, she went to work at CPA Academy. Um, I, at one point I remember reaching out to them and they kind of told me, you know, don't worry, it's, it's early still. Somebody will get in touch with you, I'm sure. And nobody ever did. 
And between that and then when I eventually found out that um, my former partner <laughs> was speaking there, uh, so clearly they had reached out to him or something, I, I, at that point I say, okay, I'm just, I'm out. You know, I'm going to just stick with and focus on QuickBooks Connect. And this is where it's at to me. And, and Intuit has pulled out. They're not going to account text. And really? I didn't know that. Yeah, they're not going to account text. They, they made that clear quite a while ago, actually. Okay. They will not be there because they're focusing on QuickBooks Connect, as they should. It's their own conference. And Fed and, and, and uh, Scaling New Heights. What about Scaling New Heights? I said heights? that and Scaling New Heights. They're focused on QuickBooks Connect and Scaling New Heights. Right, right. So, you know, and, 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 you know, and again, just being very sort of uh, frank and transparent about all this from my own perspective, Intuit has been very good to me. Um, and hence you're wearing the shirt and representing today? That's right. I've got my Accountant's Day shirt on. <laughs> I'm ready to rock. Into it. I'm ready to rock. You quick. could let us know in advance. We all have those shirts. We could wear it all together. I sh you know, I should have thought about it, but I honestly didn't think about it myself until this morning. I said, oh, we're doing a QuickBooks Connect thing today, so I should <clears> wear <throat> my accountant shirt. So here we are. I should, next time I will, um, when I email, I didn't even remember to send out the email this week. Not that I didn't even remember. I didn't have time. I've been so buried trying to make my preparations and that reminds me my final PowerPoint is due for my uh, session at QuickBooks Connect today. Um, and I've been working on that and just a whole lot of other things. So anyway, maybe what I'll do each week going forward when I do, when I am able to send out the email reminder is give everybody a heads up about like wardrobe so we can all coordinate. <laughs> that's awesome. Because that's important. <laughs> Oh, uh, so uh, let's go through questions. I haven't done questions in a while, and we have questions, and they're relevant. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, what's my favorite part of, let's ask everyone, what's your favorite part of QuickBooks Connect? Mine is honestly the networking. I love getting together with and seeing all the people, all of you. That's why I get sad when any of you tell me you're not coming. So who else? Erica, what's your favorite part? <laughs> Well, I've never been, so I know I mean, that's why I was. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> Anyone else? No, no one jumping in. I no would go if I really had the time, and and you know, I'm looking forward to hopefully doing it next year. That would be awesome. Gina, are you going to account tax? No, no. I decided not to do either of the West Coast this year. Oh. So. That's a long trip. About doing uh, Joe Woodard's on the East Coast, the Scaling New Heights next year. Mm, that'll um, be good spring. Yeah. So, and that one's in Orlando, I believe. <gasps> There's what? Joanne! <laughs> Joanne, are you coming to QuickBooks Connect? Of course you are. You're speaking there. <laughs> Imagine she's like, no, nah, I'm not going. I'll speak. Yeah, I'm not going. <laughs> uh, no, I just, I just enjoy getting out and actually seeing, you know, everyone that I've chatted with and people that I've worked with. Um, I'm really excited to, to actually get to see uh, Emily Clark because Emily and I have been doing some amazing stuff inside of a Facebook group for a niche audience, and we've never really – had a chance to like meet in person and we're doing a whole, we're going to be twinning it one day and we're going to have, um, we're going to be doing some pictures together for our, our website and stuff. So that'll be fun. Awesome. That's great. Yeah, it's cool. I was, I wrote it. Um, I, I've written a couple of articles now that are going to be coming out in between wall main. One I published yesterday, another one goes out this afternoon. And I realized, I think it was yesterday's that I wrote this in. <laughs> Yesterday I published the QuickBooks Connect Who's Coming With Me article on Between Wall and Main. Funny enough, I didn't bother to reference today's Zoom in. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, um, we have, I think, including myself, three contributors who are also speakers at QuickBooks Connect. There's mm -hmm. myself, Joanne, and Mariette, who can't be with us because she's in a planning meeting with one of the panels that she's on at QuickBooks Connect. She said she might jump in at the very last minute this morning. Um, well, Seth, I will. I'm hoping to zoom in um, either Monday or Wednesday. I'm not sure exactly what day yet, um, but I hope to be there virtually. 
<laughs> well, you can you can bet I'll be doing a lot of Facebook Live stuff. <laughs> and I'm bringing all of my gear, so we're going to get a lot of good, you know, like high def video too. That uh, of course I'll be posting on SethDavid.com, you know, right on that QuickBooks Connect page. You all know where that page is, right? It's linked right on the top of my site. Tell I, us. I will show you. <laughs> I will show you. <laughs> All right, let's bring over my bookmark manager. Seth, I got a quick question. <clears throat> if, if we can't make it to uh, QuickBooks Connect, um, your, your, your section, your, your, your presentation, are you allowed to put that on tape or whatever and, and show that later on? So funny you should ask, Larry. Um, in fact, I'll might as well talk about this because I think it's uh, it's, it's well it's definitely relevant. I think it's worthwhile to note. I am going to be pre-recording the content because normally what I do every year, and this is kind of like this goes out as like my you know, speakers at conferences. Um, I usually what I do is I have kind of like an ebook here based around the content that I'm going to be speaking on whenever I speak somewhere. Um, and then usually what I'll do is I will, you know, I say in the, in the, in the session, I'll say, give me your business card afterwards and I'll send you an email and you'll get the ebook. This way you don't have to take notes. You can pay more attention and focus. With it. And, you know, and, and then it's a way for me to get people's email addresses so that, you know, cause during the session I won't do any selling, but then when I sell, when I send the ebook after the fact, and I'll usually throw in a few promotional, you know, tidbits about, you know, how they can work with me if they want more help on the subject. So what I decided to do this time, actually, is I, I, I actually did a lot of uh, preparation. And I'm going to be pre-recording the content uh, so that instead of asking for their business cards, I have like a secret page on SethDavid.com here, which I'm going to give out the URL for right at the very beginning of the session. And it's going to be a very interactive session. You know, I'm going to be talking about networking and list building and, you know, <clears throat> it's called Grow Better, Smarter, Faster, Cracking the Networking Code in this social world. And what I'm going to do is give people the page and the page right now is password protected. So I'll give them the password. And once they get access to that page, there's going to be a form to fill out. So rather than give me your card, I'm going to say, give me your name and your email. And it's linked to MailChimp so that they will get an autoresponder right away, acknowledging that they've, you know, that we've got their uh, email. And then the following day, I don't want them distracted with it at the moment when they're in the session and they fill out the form. So a day later, they're going to get an email with a link to download an MP4 video file based on what we're pre-recording on the session. So this way I get their email addresses. I don't need to walk around with a, you know, clunky pocket full of business cards. And so mission accomplished. And I think I'm delivering something even more valuable than some ebook that I've written, but rather a video that actually walks them through everything that we're going to go through during the live session. So to answer your question, Larry, that will be available. What I haven't decided yet is how I'm going to deliver that after the fact to the general public. In other words, people who haven't attended, you know, I've got to sort of make sure that there's value for people in attending live. So what I may do is I may charge for the video after the fact. Obviously not a lot of money, you know, maybe a few bucks. Or maybe I'll just throw it up and set david.com so patrons have access to it after the fact. That's most likely what I'll wind up doing. Um, so that's, you know, that's how I plan to do that. And I think it's a smart way for speakers to you know, um, sort of get a little more bang for their own buck, so to speak, in terms of, you know, the effort and energy that you put into creating and preparing a presentation like this. Um, you know, we never want to go and sell during the session, but we hope to have it somehow turn into an opportunity. I mean, all these conferences, the whole thing they're sort of banking on or have or counting on us to bank on is not what they're paying us, but rather the exposure that we're getting, right? Right. So we're sort That's of hoping... Good that some way, shape, or form, speaking there without actually selling anything will, will, will generate some sort of ROI on the back end, right? Um, so going over to my site here, right here at the top, QuickBooks Connect. So you all registered for today with this link here, right over and down is QuickBooks Connect. So this is my countdown page. And in fact, if you go here now, you'll see I, I'm, I'm inviting John Ferrara on stage during my session. He's going to be there with me, and he's going to help me talk about networking, social selling, list building. And in fact, the very title of the session came from him. 
it came from a conversation I had with him earlier this year. Um, and he, we were talking in general about, you know, I told him this is, you know, like I said, at the very beginning of the year, I had just left, you know, uh, school of bookkeeping and <clears throat> I reached out to him and I said, Hey, I'm starting over here. I could use some help, you know? And, uh, and actually, I just said, quite frankly, I said I could use a little bit of support on a number of levels, you know, including, you know, sort of uh, morale wise. And, and, and I said, you know, I said to really you know, boil it down, I can use a mentor right now. And I knew he was the perfect person to reach out to on that basis. And so he started working with me like every Saturday we'd get on the phone and he'd start talking to me about, you know, what to do to kind of rebuild and start over. And, you know, it wasn't completely starting over. Obviously, I have a lot of very good friends and very loyal friends uh, uh, around me. And I'm incredibly grateful for that. Um, but he helped me sort of get and stay motivated instead of just sort of feeling like, oh, man, I've got to start over once again. And I wasn't really feeling that uppity, if you will, you know, about that prospect. Like one more time starting over here, I am all these years in and I'm like, shit, what do I do now? So, so he was very helpful. And in one of those calls, uh, I, one of the earlier ones that we did, he, he, he used that phrase. He says, all right, so let's figure out how to grow better, smarter, faster. And I, that was when I said, you know, that would make a great title for, for my presentation. And so you know, essentially that and the 97 and up program and then what eventually rolled into the presentation here at QuickBooks Connect, a lot of my focus this year has been about, in many ways, sort of documenting my journey, starting over, building a new business, you know, especially on the consulting side, because I really wasn't doing much on the consulting side at this point. I was so focused on all the training stuff that I was doing. Um, and I said, you know what, I want to, you know, especially if I'm going to sort of go out there and propose to teach people how to build, grow, and scale a business, I better be able to be the living example of how to do that before I propose to be able to tell others how to do it, right? Like I often like to say, if I've had the experience, you're welcome to it, but you never want my opinions on anything, right? Opinions are worthless. Um, experience is valuable, not opinions. So, you know, and, and I also didn't want to be one of those people who, and I know there are a lot of them out there, who don't actually have any clients of their own, and yet they're going to tell us all how to get clients and how to nurture relationships with clients. And it's like, no, I'd rather, you know, it's like, do I want to take advice on relationships from somebody who's been divorced five times, or do I want to get it from somebody who's been successfully married for 30 years? You know what I mean? That's kind of the way I look at this stuff. If I'm going to, you know, and, and there's a lot of, you know, we always, we all talk about it and we all hear about it and there's been plenty written about the fact that it's important to have mentors, people who can guide and help you when you're on your journey trying to build a business. And, you know, like one of the reasons I love uh, sort of following this guy, Ty Lopez, that I've spent some time following this year is he talks about this a lot and the stuff he says makes a lot of sense. And he's a guy who actually has grown businesses successfully. So he's speaking from actual experience and he says, you know, if you, if, you know, if you can't find somebody who's sort of got the time who can be a mentor, there's in the, a lot of very successful people have written a lot of books about how they did it. And so, you know, for 10 bucks a book, you can get mentors, you know, and, and, and do it that way at least. So the point is to learn from people who have the actual experience, who've done it and done it successfully. And anyway, so, so a lot of what I've been trying to develop content-wise even has been in some ways based on documenting what I'm now doing to rebuild. And as I figure out what works and what doesn't, and, you know, based on a lot of my past experience, I know what has always worked well for me in the past. So I have a lot of it already sort of in me. But a lot of what I've been learning from John has been and continues to be translated into what I'm putting out there now. Um, and what I'm going to be putting out there, especially the 97 and up course that goes along with that program. Um, so, so that's what this session is all about. And, you know, John reached out to me at this point, we had talked about it months ago about him coming to QuickBooks Connect. And by this time, I didn't think he still planned on it. I had practically forgotten that, you know, we had even talked about it. And he reached out to me early last week and said, okay, are we doing this? Are we going to QuickBooks Connect? And I said, well, John, you're a little behind, you know, here. Because he's like, we need to sync up and figure out our PowerPoints and whatever. And I said, I've already had to submit power, you know. So anyway, then we got together and I went to his office the other day and we recorded some videos here, which you can see right here on the QuickBooks Connect page. And they're all short videos. I'm learning. I'm getting better. And uh, rather than 
um, you know, doing a long 11 minute video, I broke them up into smaller segments. So the first video is like a minute and a half. Each one actually, as it turns out, got a little bit longer than the previous, but the longest one, I think this last one is about four minutes, a little longer. So you just click on the thumbnail down here and click play up here. And of course you have these arrows to advance it so you can go to the next one. But I think, you know, a few people have seen this and told me they really enjoyed it and told me they, you know, a lot of you have seen John Ferrar. I've had him on our weekly hangout or Zoom in or whatever we called it at the time. <coughs> um, so I think you'll enjoy these videos and it gives you a bit of a preview into what we'll be talking about at QuickBooks Connect this year. I think that's what I like the most about the conference is that a lot of the people that are doing the breakout sessions have have had the success and have, you know, figured some aspect of growing their practice or networking or social media or whatever it may be. Um, they're your, they're your peers and you can actually take note from their experiences and what's worked for them and what hasn't worked for them. Yeah. Yep. I agree. I agree. Um, and, and I think that's what makes it great from the learning perspective. You know, my favorite part, like I said, is the networking. But obviously, there's also a lot that you can learn. I mean, and, and the mobile app, by the way, is out. If you go into, uh, you know, the Play Store for Android or the, um, I don't know what you guys call it with the Apple, with iOS, the Apple Store. Um, if you go there, you can download the QuickBooks Connect app. And if you haven't already, you should really take the time to log into the QuickBooks Connect website. They, I have to say, they've, they've done a really good job at making it easy for you to schedule your sessions. <clears throat> and it's smart what they did because the way it works now, when you go to build my agenda, once you select something, anything that, um, I don't want to, I wanted to build it. Where is it? Anytime I select something to attend, it will automatically kind of X out the things that overlap with it. So it won't, here it is. So like once I pick this session, right, it automatically, you know, X'd out the ones that I can't attend if I'm attending this one. So it's really smart. It makes it pretty much impossible for you to, you know, book overlapping sessions to attend. Uh, and once you've done this, and I really highly recommend doing it, just go through each of, you know, there's not that much to do. You go through Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and you select which things you want to go to. And <clears throat> Once you do that and you log into the app, the app will kind of acknowledge what you've uh, selected. Now, let me try and log into the app real quick. Marietta already put out a couple of videos on the app, which is really cool. Um, so let me share my mobile with you. So you can see, that I, I, when I went to log in yesterday, I, it, I was having a little bit of trouble. It seemed to get hung up, but I just opened it now and it seems to be working, so. Yeah, I think the the first time I logged in, it it seemed to take a long time to access it and register. But once you got logged in, it seems to be fine now. Yeah, it's um. Well, I, it, at first it seems like it's um. What do you call it? It's it's gathering all the data. This is interesting. It's not finding my network. The uh, app that I used to share my mobile relies on everything being on the same network, and it's mm -hmm. telling me that it's not finding it. Let me try starting this again. And let me make sure I'm on the right wireless. Actually, I'm, yeah, I'm hardwired. I also like how they have all the sessions categorized between run, grow, build, you know, yeah. so that you can kind of like, like, what do you want your focus of your QuickBooks Connect experience to be? You can kind of look at all of the sessions that are <laughs> related to the connect, build, grow, and run. Yeah. Yep. And they, you know, and they have, they've added the self-employed track and, and now what they've done, which they never did before is they have tracks like mine, for example, uh, is sort of, you know, some tracks are specific to one of those tracks and mm -hmm. then other sessions are kind of hybridized, if you will, right. where like mine is shown in both the accounting track and the small business track. I'm going to restart my phone because for some reason I have a feeling that's what is going on. Um, so if I can, I'll get the mobile app back up here in a minute. But 
uh, again, go through this because I think you'll find that it makes it easier for you if you plan ahead and know what you're going to do and when. Now, the other thing I'm going to do, and here's a tip for you. If I bring up my calendar, let's go to um, here. This is one of the things I love about Google Calendar, and I know you can do this kind of stuff in Outlook and whatnot too, but I have a specific calendar called event slash conference, which normally is off all year until I have an event coming up. So in Google Calendar, I can say display only this calendar, for example, and then we go into next week. And, and I have, I've started adding in the things that I'm going to be attending in this calendar. And of course, on my mobile, I can do the same thing. I can say show only this calendar, you know, or I can combine them if I want to and have them overlap. But so what I'm going to do now that I've got my schedule established is I'm going to go into my actual calendar and do it here. But I think what we're going to find from what I've seen already based on Mariette's video is that you almost won't need this because you'll have it in the mobile app, but I'm so used to living by my calendar that I'm going to want it here as well anyway. So what would be cool, and I haven't gotten there yet, is if there's an option in the app that kind of says, hey, add this to my Google Calendar. Um, my phone's restarted, so let me see if I can get this going now. Uh. It's telling me that Wi-Fi is not configured properly, so let me try one last time. Oh, yeah, I wasn't connected to my Wi-Fi. That's weird. And now I need to enter the password. That's annoying. <laughs> Luckily, I have it in Evernote. So meanwhile, um, what else do you guys want to know? Let me look at some of the other questions while I do this so I don't sort of bore you and make you sit here waiting for me to enter a password. Uh, Dennis wanted to know, is it October 17th yet? Dennis, I'm glad you brought that up. So I guess... <laughs> People do have till the 17th, because I know the deadline's supposed to be the 15th, but I guess since the 15th falls out on a Saturday, they give you till Monday? Yeah, I need the time. <laughs> Glad it is the 17th. Right. Midnight the 17th. <laughs> uh, Alexa wanted to know who has gone to all QB Connects. I have. Anybody else? I've only been to two, well, last year's, and then this will be my second. How this many is, have there been? Th this year's the third. So, and then they, what happened is they started VIP Summit the year before that. So it's the third QuickBooks Connect and it's the fourth VIP Summit. I've been all three times. Look, really looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. It feels like it's getting better and better every year. And I think that's because we've built relationships more and more as each year passes. I really believe that that's the reason. That's what I'm hoping to do this time. I've been kind of shy at the last couple of them, so I look forward to meeting everybody in real life. Gotcha. Yep, this is definitely not the place to be shy. You've got to throw yourself at people. I mean, not literally, physically. And Elaine says she's been to all three. I'm looking at, I'm reading chat. Uh, Elaine? Penny Lane. Oh, Penny Lane. Wait, why don't I see Penny in the chat? From Penny Lane to all panelists, I have. I do not see that for some reason. Oh, there it is. Linda Conley, first time. Oh, let me fix that, Penny. I think it's probably because you're in here. We have five viewers who came after I started screen sharing, so I didn't see you coming in. I'm going to add you all in now, and then you should oh, be able to no unmute and talk. There we go. All right, so we got a whole bunch more people here. Yeah. That I didn't even that. know about. I'm being ignored. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hello. Hello. Sorry. Just come back. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Sarah. Sarah Laidlaw. How are yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, I was on the phone with the insurance suggester. <laughs> oh. Get started. All right. You got to turn down the input level on somebody's mic there. <laughs> yeah. Sarah, man. <laughs> Loud. I'm on my iPad. I don't know. So. Yeah, it's like ear piercing loud. At least for me, it is. Maybe it I is. can turn my volume. Yeah. Up. Okay. Sorry, Joanne. It's okay. I forgive you, darling. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. 
just found out that I, well, I knew it. I had a ten thousand dollar deductible for hurricanes, and uh, I was hoping something wouldn't come for that deductible. Oh, she took it out. Pink. Am I still too loud? Very loud. <laughs> How do I fix this? How do I fix this? Not sure. Hopefully, there would be like a an input level setting, but it's an iPad and it's your iPad's camera mic, so who knows? All right, I'm finally connected to my Wi-Fi. <laughs> Dennis's face was priceless. He's like, <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> new office, new place, getting used to everything all over again, Sarah. I'm at the house today because the air conditioning's out at the... At the office? Yeah, but Mark's office. All right, here we go. <coughs> it's really weird. I've never been kicked off my home network before like that. Strange thing. Hey, hey, hey. Good, we're seeing. Yay. Yes, so let's get that app going. And let's see what this looks like. I like your world clock there thing that I just saw you whiz by. Oh, I need that. I'll, I'll show that to you in a minute because I, I, I talk to people in these parts of the world on a pretty regular basis. So I'm always like, what time is it where they are? So I don't. And, and yeah, I'm feeling a need. Yep. Here, I'll, since, yeah, so here it is. So these are just little clock widgets. There's actually two of them because each one you can do two. Clock. So I have, as you can see, Jerusalem, Sydney, London, and Auckland, which is New Zealand. Very nice. So yeah, Very and that nice. helps. So you just set up a page like that on your phone? Yeah, I set up a page just for these widgets, and that's also where my alarm clock goes, which normally is set for four, but this morning I decided to sleep in until seven, and then I had a you, you rebel, you. I'm crazy <laughs> like that. All right, all right, but let's talk about the QuickBooks Connect app, and not my world clock. <laughs> Sorry. That's We're okay. All um, so here's my schedule, right? Like I said, I went through the website and I set them up. So once I logged in, you know, it does take a minute because it's probably got a link to the website. You know, it asks you to log in, of course, with the same login. That's how it knows who you are. And then it's going to, you know, uh, fill in all the information. And like Joanne and I were saying earlier, it seems like it gets hung up, but that's probably just because it takes a few minutes for it to kind of crawl the site and get all the data. Uh, mm -hmm. And we tap our little hamburger menu and I can look at my profile um, and I can, you know, you can change it all. Let's make the profile public. And I can link my social accounts. Let's do that real quick. I'm sure I want to do it. Wouldn't that be funny to, like, uh, uh, see, now it's going to ask me to log in. So, oh, no, that's not the right login, though. See, LastPass is great like that. That's it. Except that sometimes LastPass then goes away just when you need it. And you have to keep tapping back and forth into the login things. And anyway, all right, I'm not going to waste your time doing that now. But obviously, you get the idea. Um, you know, go through this and obviously link up your social accounts because that's where uh, we can type updates in here, right? Um, what else can we do? We can, uh, what's attendee match? Is this like if I'm looking for a date? Yeah, it's kind of like match.com for QB Connect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I need that because, you know, my wife will be really happy that I've met. <laughs> That's great. That's a great option. Not necessarily for dating, but meeting up with people. Yeah, it's like it, it lets you choose, like, you know, professionals or accounting professionals or what industry and kind of. Yep. That's huh. perfect. So definitely do that because that's one of the things that I've said this, one of the things that's different and in many ways I think better about QuickBooks Connect is it's the only conference that actually has the business owners and the accountants there so that you actually can connect with your potential clients. I like the, the um, I like underneath the resources where it has like the speakers and the sponsors where it like gives all the information and their social accounts and little quick bios and stuff. That's kind of cool. Ooh, let's see what it says about me. Cause I didn't send any of this up. So somebody else must've done it for me. Wait, let's look at Joanne. Not in alphabetical order. Kind of order. There's Joanne. There's Yay. <laughs> her quirky and fun sense of humor coupled with her natural talent for teaching and training is what keeps Joanne's clients coming back for more of her engaging and groundbreaking consulting. 
I like that. So, Joanne, did you write that or did somebody write that for you? Um, I wrote it. You did? <laughs> I did. <laughs> you you like you you I don't think I wrote mine. Yeah, somebody else wrote mine for me. I didn't write this. I mean, I like it, but I didn't write it. Seth's superpower. It's actually a variation on what I have written on my social profiles. Yeah. yeah. You're a superpower. Am I still too loud? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you turn your volume down, your input level will go, I don't know. I did. I did. I did. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so just I can barely hear you. Yeah, I don't know. There's got to be an input level setting on your mic there, on your iPad. Okay. But, yeah, so this is, like, from my, uh, um, a, a lot of this is from my LinkedIn profile, I think. Sarah, why don't you try whispering? I am whispering. This, this is my, my inside, inside voice. That's her inside voice. Oh I my need God. to hear her outside voice. Uh -oh. <laughs> so there's a social feed, but I'm wondering if there's a place here, like usually there's like a way you can actually write an update right in the app and have that get shared with everyone. I think if you click on the, I think what it does now, though I, it's not inside the app. I think what they did is, remember this last year, people were like, should we post inside the app? So now it's like if you click on the Twitter, you're actually having yeah, it'll, it'll drop the hashtag in there for you. It looks like yeah, because it yeah. says join the conversation. And so once you've linked to your profiles, but here I can take a picture. It looks like should we take a picture? No, that's just to share. Let's go to Facebook. Yeah, so it'll just create a Facebook post for you but that's weird it doesn't even drop the hashtag in for you wow so you have to put the hashtag in yourself and you know a lot of people get confused about this people want to do things like qbc 2016 but the official hashtag it shows here it is on qb connect simple just qb connect <clears throat> so because it, it gets annoying sometimes because people have like six different variations on the hashtag and then yeah. people don't know which one to sort of follow um I was asking Marietta about that, and she says, I want to make sure I'm in all the hashtags. <laughs> and she can handle juggling that. I know. That's funny. I can send Joanne a message. Oh, cool. Hi. No messages? <laughs> Who is the stalker that's messaging me? Let me see if it shows up on my app. Let me see what how it's doing. Talking. <laughs> it did it. It just buzzed me. Yeah. Are you coming? But yeah, it gave me a notification. Well, answer. Yeah. I'm going you want to. to see answer. <laughs> well, maybe it's a private message. Not oh, no, the, well, now I'll do the private message. Yeah, do the private message, though. Yuppers. <laughs> Can you send on the map where you're at, where, you, where you're speaking? That would be cool. Can you say, say that again? What's the question? Um, I saw maps in your app. Can you send where you're at to somebody? <clears throat> like Joanne's room that she'll be speaking? Uh, probably just in a message. I mean, obviously the smart thing to do there would be to use the hashtag and post that on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and everywhere else. Oop, I got an alert. Message from Joanne. <laughs> 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 but the other place, the other way to do that, by the way, and while we're here, I should talk about this, is I've set up the Slack team. And the Slack team, mind you, is... <laughs> Now, you know, sort of around the event, but the idea is to have this ongoing. So I, I made a Slack team called Between Wall and Main Strategy Forum. So I think the smart way to do that in terms of letting people know where you're at is use the Slack team, take a picture and share it there. And if you want to um, join the Slack team, just kind of email me and let me know and I'll send you, you know, just like we did last year. I just need to have you fill out a really quick form that says that you want to join. So I have your email and I can just quickly copy and paste the email and invite you into the Slack team. So, uh, and I can post that in the chat right now, actually. Yeah, that's been kind of fun, the conversations going on in Slack. 
Yeah, I, well, and that's the idea. And and so Slack, I just you know, it's as as a lot of you I think know already. It's just a great little communications tool. Um, can't access this because I have this guy up. There we go. So if we go into Smartsheet, and I'll just grab the web form link. You'll see kind of how I do this. Oh look, new features available. Smart sheet for Salesforce. That's neat. You even have people's pictures. What's that? I saw a picture of Mariette pop up. Well, that's because you saw the between well and contributors thing, and I have it filtered for Friday's editions. Because every day I go in and check, okay, who's scheduled to post today, and I double check that they have something scheduled. That's the first thing I do pretty much every day when I get here. Uh, where are we? QuickBooks Connect. QuickBooks Connect. I forgot my alphabet. There it is. 16. Web Forms. There's the link. And it's in the chat. So just click on the link from the chat. And after today's um, call here, I'll bring you in. Meanwhile... I can bring the actual Slack team up on the desktop. <clears throat> and if you haven't already, I've, I've been finding out that a lot of people apparently do not use these desktop apps for Slack, and you really need to. Um, if you're using it in the browser, you're going to find it clunky because you need to have a different tab open for every different team that you're in. Um, whereas here, you know, I can just bounce from channel to channel, you know, and from team to team. So here's the sort of uh, web version. Ah, I keep trying to click on a channel, and I keep getting the wrong thing. Um, so here we have, you know, the general feed, and then we started creating QuickBooks Connect channels for each of the days so people can talk about, like, what they're doing from day to day. And uh, then I, asked, I invited the people who are in here who are speaking to create a channel based on their section. So uh, Rachel Fish has her tricky transactions. Mariette's is value to self-employed, and mine, of course, is grow better, smarter, faster. Um, and I posted the John Ferraro videos that I did here as well. So, and then uh, Joanne did her build your brand. So she's in here. So request to join. It's a lot of fun. And like I said, it's not just going to be about QuickBooks Connect. It's going to be for, <coughs> excuse me, all year round. You know, just anybody who wants to. It's just another, <coughs> excuse me, forum for having the conversations. What's cool about this is um, it's, you know, I, I just somehow it feels more instant to me. Joanne, would you agree as opposed to getting on Yeah, Facebook? I'm still trying to get used to it because this is kind of like my first full-on experience really trying to embrace Slack. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's very instantaneous, and you can share all kinds of, you know, you can share videos really easy and, you know, images and links and the feed seems to flow you can actually read the conversations and follow along i think a lot easier yeah um, i like how it's organized. i like how it's organized i like how the hashtags organize everything if you want to post something in um right so, yeah i'm starting to <coughs> starting to like the slack i gotta say i love slack did you see the one i did a few weeks ago on how to use slack for accountants and bookkeepers I haven't yet, no, but I'm going to. It's, yeah, on, it's, it's on my bookmarks to watch. Because separate and apart from, you know, the actual context of using it in your accounting practice, there's a lot of little tips and tricks I gave about just little features of Slack. You know, like search works really well if you're looking for something by topic. Um, and notice here you have little commands that you can use. So you can search specifically for anything from a particular username and so on. Um, you know, you cool. can start things. So if I want to get back to this later. And Joanne says, what is the top struggle you have with branding your business? I can start. It. And then later, even if I'm back in the general over here, I can show all the things I've started. And it takes me, that takes me to Joanne's profile. Let's go back to the star thing. But I can click just like on Facebook or any social network, I can click on the timestamp or it gives me the jump button that takes me right there. Mm -hmm. And it kind of lights it up for me so I know this is the thing I sort of asked to <coughs> bookmark. So a star is like a bookmark for a comment. Um, cool. And then the other thing you can do is you can say, remind me about this. Oh, that's, that's cool. 
which is really cool. So there's a lot of this kind of built-in workflow, <coughs> you know, that Slack provides for. Um, How did you put in the, um, when you did it in the general group and you did the, the gift, is that just uploading, you just upload the straight gift, you don't have to do anything fancy to get it in there? No, you have to go in, you go into the integrations in your Slack team. So when you're doing like your own team, you go into apps and integrations. And if you search for Giphy, it's okay. one of the integrations you can turn on. And gotcha. once you have it turned on, just do forward slash Giphy, right? And notice it gives you the command. So you just do slash Giphy space and then you just do a search term. And there's no, it's not like, you know, in Facebook's GIFs, you can, you can watch them. Yeah. It's just let's see if I get lucky. So let's say good morning. And I also, there are settings you can choose where you can make it <laughs> <laughs> you can make it PG or not, and I chose to have all, so you even get the dirty ones, which That's makes funny. Kind of I funny like that. Sometimes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it is fun. It's a, it's just again, it's it's got lots of these little things that make it fun to uh, interact. And everybody sees Stacy Burns thing. So, um, if you if you or anyone you know is still trying to kind of decide last minute about registering and going. Use a speaker guest promo code and it'll knock $150 off the price. That's nice. Am I still too loud? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> so, you know, the app is great. And this, of course, is sort of built from my perspective, more geared around our, you know, our own kind of community mm -hmm. here around Between Wall and Main, you know, that we've all kind of created together. So... That's uh, and then and again, so like what I'll probably do at certain points is just because here on the spot from my mobile, let me switch over to the mobile side. And my little app needs to reset it. So oh, Sarah said good morning. So I'm going to take a photo. <laughs> Let's do a selfie. I take the photo. I think it's a little blurry, but oh well. It's the morning. I'll make everybody think they need more coffee. God morning. <laughs> I can't type at all. I'm using my stylus too. That's usually where I'm good. Noodling. Good noodling to you. <laughs> Obviously, I need more coffee. So what I'll probably do, and the reason I'm kind of showing you this, besides the fact that it's just fun, is I can take a snapshot of wherever I'm standing at the convention center and say, I'm here, come meet me, you know. This is kind of a fun, even more interactive way of doing that. And now if we go to the web, you know, there it is. So I love how instant that is. I mean, again, you can do the same thing with Facebook Messenger, theoretically, um, but not in the group. In the group, you can just post an update. I don't know, but like like Joanne said, and you know, and I feel the same way. This just feels more interactive somehow. Yeah, it's just got a different feel to it as opposed to just commenting and posting in the Facebook group. And for the, for you know for the purposes of during the conference, you know, this way we don't kind of flood the Facebook group with, with the conference related stuff necessarily. Although I have no problem with that if we do that too, because you know this way you kind of give people as much as possible you know, a taste of, you know, what it might be like being at the actual conference. A lot of, like last year, I did a lot of periscoping because that was before there was Facebook Live. And a lot of people thanked me and said they felt like it, I was like bringing them right into the conference. You know, because yeah, last year I did, um, I think it was, I did Oprah's um, keynote. I was periscoping Oprah's keynote and Mike McCallum was already in the airport and he was thanking me because he got to watch the, <laughs> watch the keynote because he had to take off and get back to the east coast so it was kind of cool yeah. i got her whole keynote on 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 mine and then i was really disappointed because the video quality that you get in the recording after the fact mm -hmm. from periscope is lousy mm -hmm. Not only that, but i was holding my phone landscape so mm -hmm. it all came out sideways so if i wanted to publish them you'd be looking at it like this. Like. So, I mean, of course I could bring it into an editor and flip it, but bottom line, it wasn't great quality. Next time I get an opportunity to be in the front row when Oprah's talking, I'm going to yeah. bring proper equipment and record it for better quality after the fact. <laughs> yeah. I think I actually have her stuff. I have to go through and check. I think I actually double recorded it. I have one on, I have my Periscope and I think I also got it on my, um, 
my Sony A5100. So I think I do have pretty good video of her keynote, but I have to dig through my files to find out where it is. Yes, I mean, and she was awesome last she year. Was. I, I was not expecting that. I was not a fan. I had nothing against her, but I wasn't like an Oprah fan. I didn't, you know, I, I obviously knew, you know, enough about her, but um, I was blown away by yep. her talk that she gave last year. Yep. So that was great. So what about this year's keynotes? What do we think? I, I've, I'm really looking forward, I think, mostly, I think, to Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, – well, I'm a big um, Jillian Michaels fan mm -hmm. and Eva Longoria and Shaq, I think, are my, one, are my ones I want to – I'm look, really looking forward to hearing. Malcolm, yes, absolutely. Um, Tony Hawk, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. <laughs> And the Olympic people, I, I guess we'll see, you know? Yeah. Well, I think the theme is that these are all people who've built brands, you know? Yeah. Like even like Shaq, you know, we're not going to, he's not going to talk about his basketball career. He's going to talk about how he, you know, I guess sort of leveraged what he was able to create during his career to build a brand. And now he sells gold bond. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Which I don't buy. I don't use gold bond. <laughs> Well, I have all my apps on my phone ready for QuickBooks Connect. I have QuickBooks Connect app. I have the Own It app. I have, the Slack. I have, installed I have the Slack app right next to Pokemon Go because right. that's the priority right there. So let's hope that they have charging stations all over the place for you, Joanne. Well, nope. I, got my, I, I invested in a Mophie. You need two <laughs> Mophies. Yeah, I have a bunch too. Um, it's funny, and I just bought another Mophie because I, I went to um, – it's funny. I, I went to – so last week I was in the Verizon store, <clears throat> and I asked them, I said, so has Samsung figured out the whole Note 7 thing? And at that time they said, yes, in fact, they're, they're recalling the bad ones and sending out replacements. Mm -hmm. So I spent about two hours there kind of rebundling my whole system because I have a bunch of devices on one shared data plan. So I have my phone, I have a tablet, I have a, a MiFi jetpack, I have um, my wife's phone, and what else? So I added another tablet that I, that, so now my wife has a tablet, they gave me another jetpack, and we did all this stuff, and it comes out about the same monthly amount. Plus I got a lot of extra data on my data plan with that I've got like 30 gigabytes of monthly data which unless I'm streaming Netflix on it I'll never use so did all that and then wake up Monday morning and the Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg both had articles about how even the replacement notes were overheating now and mm -hmm. you recalled in that Samsung had at that point gone as far as to completely uh, you know stop production and, and they're not even like going to try to fix it at this point they're just not making them anymore rest um, in peace the note seven so i went back to the verizon store yesterday and said okay what can we do so i will be one of the very first recipients of the new google pixel phone which comes out october 20th and google pixel google that's google's new android phone and so and there's been write up saying that the people who can't have the note seven that's kind of what they're looking to go to but they're not out yet so i pre-ordered mine and it's it's funny it's going to come right on time for quickbooks connect yeah, but we install this because it comes out the 20th day overnight it i'll have it on the 21st yeah. um you could open a box but part of that deal they, got, they, they threw in a another mophie power station so i'm going to have mm -hmm. i have like three that'll be my third actual mophie and then I have a bunch of the little swag type uh, charging yeah. things that people have given away over the years. I have one that I probably should not bring to QuickBooks Connect because it has the other guys on it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll probably leave that one at home for this purpose. Yeah, um, I actually, last year, um, I had what actually worked for me, especially for my, I found my phone was going first. So I was actually charging my phone off my Mac. So I have my MacBook Pro that's pretty light, and I was carrying that with me in case I wanted to, you know, do some social media or whatever there. And you can just plug, at least for the Macs, you can just plug your phone in there and charge it, take the power from the Mac and put it on the phone. And then I was siphoning off of Seth's Mophie um, whenever I could. <laughs> Right. And, but they do have a lot of charging stations there and, you know, a lot of opportunities to, 
to charge up when you can. So Yeah, they do. And then, you know, people get rowdy. They start fighting and getting into fist fights over who gets the charging station. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, um, that's, a, that's a great way to get people to come to you. You just sit down with your Mophies and say, go right. That's right. There you go. You can charge for that's it. That's taking notes now. Hey, look, I'm, I, I only charge a dollar per kilowatt used in my device. There you go. So but, some, but sometimes it's good to just you yeah. gotta have the right backpack I, have, right. Like, I can fit so much stuff in here and i just carry this around with me yeah i mean with the conference though i think the one thing that i learned and i i think it was katrina and i that did it at one point in time is we decided to just play like hooky from one of the sessions and just kicked back and you know chatted and just took five minutes to just relax and not have to go from, you know, session to session to session to session. You have to try to build out that time at one point in time and just say, let's just take a breather. <laughs> I did that. In fact, when I was doing my schedule this time, there was a certain uh, area, of, you know, time in the schedule where I said, you know, I'm just not going to schedule anything. But truth be told, last year and the year before, I spent less time in sessions than I did, or out of sessions rather than I did in them. I spent most of my time talking to people, you know, doing what I love to do most, which is the networking yeah. part. I, I want to spend more time in the in the vendor area this time. Yeah, the exhibit hall. Like I plan on going. My one of my goals is to get to every single booth with my gear, so I can. I want to get at least a couple of minutes on video of every single exhibitor, mm -hmm. and get them talking about their product, because then it's great content for me to to produce after the fact. And yep. you know, it's just great research to see what all is out there, especially, I mean, there's a lot of the stuff that we're already very familiar with. And I'm certainly going to hit them up because they're my good friends and colleagues, but I want to try and get to a lot of the ones that I really haven't paid attention to uh, because either they're new or I just haven't had the chance. So my goal is to literally go booth to booth through the exhibit hall and get at least a couple minutes of video with each of them. That's why I'm glad that it's there it's going on for as many days as it is to be able to get those opportunities to, cause there's so that exhibit all is huge, mm -hmm. huge. There's so many booths there. I have a question for almost everyone. If, do you recommend to attend to the advanced uh, certification classes during the conference? If you haven't already, but Astrid, you're at the, weren't you at the QBO advanced cert or, or no, you were at the road no. Thing, that right? was the normal, yeah. yeah. I, I only have the regular um, pro advisor certification, not the advanced yet. Right. So it's funny you should ask because at 3 o'clock today, I have a video and post publishing on Between Well and Main. Mm -hmm. called, so I think I titled it something like why you should go to the advanced certification training. Okay. I mean, in my yeah. opinion is, yeah, you should take it. Let's put it, and, and here's the point I made. I'll spoil it for you. It's one of the points, actually, so it's not completely spoiled. You should still go watch the video. But... Um, even if you're not, let's say you weren't going to take the exam, you're still going to learn a ton of really valuable information about QBO. And it's worth it there. I would almost say, though, don't do it at Christmas Connect. Do it when they come around, although you've missed it because you're near me in Los Angeles. Um, mm -hmm. and they were here earlier, you know, a couple months ago. I went, and again, I went, and it was fun to sort of just network and see people. Um, and I did, I haven't even taken the exam yet. I haven't had time. But I went for the certification training because I learned a lot, you know, which is great. Okay, thank you. What I did last time was to take all of the exams that I could pass beforehand, so I only had to do one session there, and then I didn't have to miss a whole bunch of other sessions. Yeah, so th and that was the thing I was going to say. Thanks. Uh, that was Alexa, right? Right. Um, is <coughs> if, you, if you can, do it outside of QuickBooks Connect now that they're going city to city with it. I think the next and last one that's on the schedule now is Chicago, I want to say. Um, but I'm sure they're going to schedule more. So if possible, don't do it during QuickBooks Connect because there's so much other stuff going on. If you can, do it, you know, uh, you know if they come to, to, to your city. Uh, and that's really the best way. But, if it, it, you know, on the other side of it, if you really want to get certified, then I would definitely get it done. Get it out of the way. Get the certified. You definitely want the training if your intention is to take the exam because it's not an easy exam. And it's obviously designed that way on purpose because they really want it to mean something when you do pass it. You know, and it's like Laura had said, and I made this point in the video that's coming out later today, that, you know, 
when you're taking it, you're going to be upset that it's so hard. But once you've passed it, you're going to be glad that it was really hard. Because again, that means it actually means something to have it. So I would, you know, and in the, in the bigger picture, you know, if you're wondering, do I do it? Do I not do it? I think it's a good idea because I really believe strongly that that's where the future is, is in QuickBooks Online. So whether it's in a year or five years from now, I think ultimately it's inevitable that this is where it's going to be. You know, the desktop only has so much life left in it. So, and not that it's going away tomorrow, but, you know, ultimately I think that's where it's, that's what it, that's where it's at. So since um, I have registered for, or actually marked on my calendar for a few classes uh, during the conference for the advanced certification, do you recommend to go to other classes rather than go for the advanced certification? Well, again, only if it's going to be coming near you, you know, outside of QB Connect. If it's something you want to get done, then you don't need more than one. I think if you just, like only sign up for one, it's going to be the same class, I believe. So it sounds like you said, plural, like signing up for multiple ones. They have them, yeah, they're multiple classes. Oh, there are, see the one, yeah. when, the one that Laura and MB, okay. Cause Laura, oh, maybe they're breaking it up because there's different sort of segments to the training. Yeah. When Laura and MB came to Los Angeles, I think they just covered it all in one session, but it was an all day training. That's probably why. So they probably <laughs> broke it up so that you can go like an hour here, an hour there. But yeah, yeah if it's something that you really want to get done, then I would recommend, um, you know, attending those because, you know, look, if your goal is to serve clients who are using QBO and you want to position yourself as, you know, again, because the test is hard, there are many fewer people who've passed that one as opposed to just your basic QuickBooks online certification. So it can, having that certification can really set you apart and give you some extra marketability in terms of going out to clients and saying, Hey, look, I'm advanced certified in this. So, you know, I'm better than you. <laughs> You can find all the training online. You don't have to go to a class to do it. Um, which I haven't looked at the online trainings. Are they good? I mean, yeah, I guess they're, they're okay. And you can stop and start it and you can take screen grabs so that you can remember what that's the big trick is take a screen grab of your answers to each question. So when you, if you miss it and you go back and have to do it again, you remember which ones were wrong um, and then you filter down. So I managed to do it all online except module five really stumped me and i took the class from um i can't think of her name right now but anyway laura um, yes and that just helped me push over the over that and it was really paid off to have that certification that's great advice so great. there you have it Thank astrid you. maybe it's better than to focus on other things at quickbooks connect because yeah. you can do it online after the fact so. definitely thanks alexa yeah so uh, Deborah had asked, is his name really Ishmael? But I have no idea what that means. <laughs> and it looks like Deborah's out of her car, but you're muted. Hold on, let me unmute you. Okay. There That's you the go. first line of Moby Dick. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. See, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not culturally literate. To know well, usually that. I ask, who is John Galt? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> So Mariette's not here and, and may or may not get here and we're actually just about out of time I just noticed but she asked what's the strangest thing in your suitcase now this could be a funny question so let's go around the horn with that one <clears throat> what's the strangest thing in your suitcase even if you're not going to QuickBooks Connect I know what Sarah's is Sarah's got a funny hat that she's going to be bringing <laughs> it's Sarah. <with> Sarah. <laughs> yeah, not Sarah yeah that's Sarah <laughs> I'm going to put it in a bag, though. <laughs> so we have Sarah with an H and then Sarah without the H. That's how we can distinguish. The best Sarahs. <laughs> Two best. <laughs> Loud Sarah. I don't know what the strangest thing in my suitcase would be. I think I'm kind of boring that way. I think most of my stuff is just like, you know, clothes and toiletries, basically. But I will be having this stuff picked out in advance. So... Make sure I don't have smalls. I'm sorry, because usually the smalls and the meat are sort of left <laughs> over. Because most people just did you have them made. What did you have them made? I'm assuming yeah. that's the right. one that has the four. Oh, yeah, of course. I had these made. Yeah, I did that. So it was the idea is you have quick I made. Okay, and that's like the ecosystem, you know. And I obviously had to pick, yeah, so I picked the four vendors that I've probably done kind of the most with. Um, I, I probably could have put six or eight of them on here, 
but um, I had to pick four. So I picked, and I'm glad because I do a lot of work with BQE software. So they easily could have had a place here, but they're not going to be a quick disconnect. So I'm sort of glad I didn't use them. Um, but yeah, and I have a few different styles. I have a lot of shirts I'm bringing. And I've got stickers. So peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I'm not bringing PB and J's this time. That was a Sleater thing. I never did that with Quick Connect. Hey, so for those of you wondering, my first couple of conferences that I ever spoke at in this industry were, of course, at Sleater. And the first year I did a social media thing. And as a, a partly a, a part of my demonstration was to show how if you do some kind of outrageous things, it really works to get people's attention. And there's a video called Peanut Butter Jelly Time. But I showed and it had like millions of views and I had bought those Smucker's pre-made PB&J sandwiches. You can get them at Costco. They're absolutely delicious. Um, and I, when I played that video, I sort of handed them out into the audience. I gave out. You tossed them out to people. It reminded me of uh, delis in New York. That's how they, <laughs> they throw the sandwiches at you and you have to catch them. Yep, I was slinging PB&Js. <laughs> So anyway, um, so next week we'll actually we'll have one more Zoom in before QuickBooks Connect. The following week, obviously, I will be, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, detained, um, predisposed, something like that. So we will not have one in two weeks from today. So next week, I'll figure out hopefully an interesting topic for you all, and we'll come here and we'll talk about it. And then Gina, what are you doing? Now? Almost done with my Zoom. Oops. Oops. I was overridden. <laughs> Sarah forgot to mute herself. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> it was more interesting. <laughs> At least you didn't say like, "My God, this is so boring. I can't wait till it's over." <laughs> you get what you get today. It's an open session. Uh -huh. <laughs> Excellent. So everybody, look for Gina's uh, a group on Facebook so you can get the information for joining later on. Absolutely. All right.